Hey everyone, welcome to Marvel Medicine. My name is Dr. Chaudhry. This lecture is on central venous pressure. What does this mean? The veins in your body all centrally return to your right atrium. They end up as the superior vena cava, the inferior vena cava, and bring all the deoxygenated blood to the heart to send to the lungs. This central meeting point is the right atrium and it, is, it has a certain pressure inside this atrium. So what determines the right atrial pressure? Number one, the amount of blood that is able to go from the right atrium to the right ventricle to the lungs. The reason why is because the more that leaves the right atrium, the less blood and pressure there is inside the atrium. In other words, the right atrium depends on the right ventricle's ability to send out blood. Imagine a factory. We have a product which gets sent from the right atrium to the right ventricle, which is the end of the factory line. Our transport system is the right ventricle's ability to contract. If that transport system isn't working, the products are going to back up because we can't ship them out. So the heart does the same thing. If the right ventricle isn't working correctly, the blood will back up. If that happens, the right atrium won't be able to get rid of its blood and accumulate, so the pressure will increase. If the pressure in the right atrium increases, do you think it would be easier or harder for blood to return from the veins? Harder, right? So blood backs up in the veins that empty into the right atrium. This is why you have signs like jugular venous distension and right heart failure. Makes sense now, right? The second thing that determines right atrial pressure is how much blood is coming into it. Basically, preload and venous return. So what increases preload? A bunch of stuff, like laying down, for example, right? Being supine. Being supine gets rid of that effect of gravity that it has on your vascular system. So if we connect the dots, laying down will increase your right atrial pressure. Now you know how. How about increased sympathetic tone and contraction of those vessels sending blood back up? Yep, that does it as well. The other thing that increases preload is arterial vasodilation. The more dilated these arteries are, the less resistance and more blood that can get to the venous side back to the heart. Let's make sure we understand this concept. I'll ask a question. Let's say I'm doing laparoscopic surgery and I inflate the abdomen with CO2, carbon dioxide. What would that do to my right atrial pressure? This is kind of interesting and dynamic. The reason why is because since you're inflating the abdomen, it will initially squeeze all the visceral vasculature and send the blood upwards towards the heart. So initially the preload would increase. However, after some time, the preload would decrease. Why? Because that intra-abdominal pressure will make it harder for blood to come back up from the lower extremities to the heart. 